together in one accord to seek the majesty of your face, God. We don't want just the blessings, God. We want to see your face, God. Moses cried out, God, show me your glory, God. Father, show us your glory today, oh God, that we will see you moving, God, in our lives. God, we thank you that he who dwells, the children of God, your people, God, dwell in the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God, just show shadow alone, God. It's a wonderful place to be, God. Draw us, Jesus, today. Draw us into your presence, God. Draw us into the atmosphere where you are, God. Cause our minds to accelerate beyond the earth realm, God, into the heavenly of heavens and the holy of holies, God. In the name of Jesus, then you, God, will cause us to rest under the shadow of the almighty God. Father, what a wonderful experience to know that you invite us to come, God. From out of our bellies shall flow rivers of living waters, God. Because of the worship that flows from our heart, God, we can receive the well flowing from our hearts, oh God, to touch lives and change hearts, God. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust, God. Lord, we come today just declare that we trust you, God, to declare that we will worship you, God, to declare that we will magnify you, God, to declare that we will praise you, God, to declare that we will surrender to you, God, that you would have your way, God, release your glory in this room, God. Lord, fill the tabernacles with your glory, God. Throw your weight around today, God that will compel us to fall down before you, God, to cast our crown at your feet, God. Throw your weight around, God, that will cause us to cry out in our desolations, God, in our weariness, in our wayward ways, oh God, to cause us to come back to repentance, God. Father, throw your weight around today, God, that your glory fill this room, God. Pray for our children, God. In this season, God, so many children being murdered, God, being abused, oh God. But we cover our children, God, with the spirit of the living God that your anointing, God, will be a shield round about our children, God, to cover their minds, oh God, to change their focus, to change their direction, God, that they will learn how to seek your face for themselves, oh God. Touch the parents, God, that the parents will have a compassionate heart, a heart to follow after God, to turn themselves into your hand, to your will, for your glory, God, that you will raise their children in the admonition of the Lord. Your word tells the parent to train up a child in a way he should go, that when he's old, they will not depart from it, God. Father, help us today. Help our unbelief, oh God. Help the times we keep on rebelling against you, God, not training our children the right way, God. Draw us, God. That the church will come together in one accord, God. To hear your voice speaking to us, God. Compelling us to come to the place of bowing down at your feet, God. Compelling us to worship you, King Jesus. Compelling us, God, to lay our sin down at your feet, God. Father, we pray for the church today, God. The church as a whole, God. That you will call for a spiritual awakening, God, in the body of Christ, that your people, God, will be sensitive to your voice, oh God, will hearken, will listen, will obey your voice, God, that the church will be unified. We don't want to be like the five foolish virgins, God, who didn't come prepared, God, when the bridegroom came. 
We want to be in that number, God, where you call your bride, God, to take a rightful place, oh God. And then, Lord, we pray for our shepherd, God, and his family right now, God. After celebrating his anniversary, his wife and their anniversary, God, that you cover them, God. That you shield them with your presence, God. That you call the refreshing, a restoration to take place in their spirits, God. There will be a revival taking place in their relationship, God. They will call them, Father God, to accelerate into the things of God, to draw to the river of the living water, to find themselves being refreshed in your presence, God. We rebuke the devourer, God, in their marriage, God, in anybody else's marriage, when the enemy try to violate and attack God. Father, this is a season of an attack when the enemy's trying his heart to destroy families, God, but we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And we command the people of God to come together in one accord that families will be united. Come back to the place of prayer, the place of worship. Together, God, because you said a house divided against itself cannot stand, oh God. But teach us how, God, in this season to stand together in one accord. That you will get the glory. And we praise you, God. I pray for Pastor Terry's brother. Father God, Wayne, in the name of Jesus. I speak healing, God, in his heart condition, God. The operation he just had, Father, a couple of days ago, I thank you that he came out well, God, that you, God, are going to restore his body, God, his heart condition, God, and any others who's dealing with heart problems, God, that they will have a God encounter like never before, God. It will cause healing to flow, God, that their hearts will be repaired, will be restored, will be refreshed in your presence, God. We thank you, O oh God, for the musicians and the worshipers, God. We thank you, O oh God, that you release a fresh anointing, God, upon their hearts today, O oh God. That you would use them for your glory, God. As we learn how to be sensitive to your voice, that when you speak, we listen. When you tell us to move, we move that you would be glorified. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God some praise in the house today. Maybe a few of us here today, but we're going to have a great time in God. I don't know about you, but I come and expect God to move in the house today. The devil ain't going to stop my praise just because people decide to stay home today. It ain't going to stop me from praising my God. I pray that one person came today because God has been good to me. He's been too good for me not to praise him. You know, I, I was thinking about a few days ago. I saw a picture from February 2016 when I was coming through the cancer event compared to today and I posted on Facebook because it just reminded me of how good my God is. When I thought I was going down for the last count, I thought my life was almost over. I felt like I was going to die. God showed up in the midst of my hospital room. God showed up in my house when I was sick with cancer. And he healed my body and delivered me. That's the reason I get excited. If God has done anything for you, if he brought you anything in your life that you know you can fix for yourself, it ought to be a praise in your heart today to declare to God, God, you're so worthy. Go shine that up, I see. God, you're so worthy. Hallelujah of the glory and the praise. God, you're so worthy. You didn't have to bring me through it, God. You didn't have to deliver me, God. You didn't have to heal me, God. But God, you're so worthy. Glory to God. 
I don't know about you, but I come expecting God today. I come to bless his name. I come to praise him. I come to get out the way that he can lead the way. I want God to show up in here. I want God to provoke us. I want him to stir us up. I want him to change us. That everything that we do, we do to the glory of God. In the mighty name of Jesus, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're so worthy. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. God, you're so worthy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many excited about Jesus today? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. See, when you know, you can do like the man who was at the pool of Bethesda, standing in your condition for 30 and 8 years and never changing. And all of a sudden, Jesus show up right at that well, right where you are, that pool. And he says, what do you want me to do? He had an excuse. He said, every time I wanted to get in the water, somebody got in the way. What's your excuse today? What's hindering you from obeying God? What's hindering you from getting your deliverance? Just like the man, Jesus said, okay, rise up and be made whole. The same message is speaking to us today. Doesn't matter what your condition is, what your situation is, God is speaking the same message. Rise up, mighty man and woman of God. Rise up, children of the most high God. Rise up and receive your deliverance. Rise up and be made whole. And I guarantee God will do just what he promised to do in your life. That's how good he is. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You got a song for us, brother? Hallelujah. song for this morning is a congregational and it ain't one you're used to but the song says our battle cry is Lord we praise your name as we will shout and proclaim we have victory in your name and our battle cry is Lord we praise your name Our battle cry is, Lord, we praise your name. Our battle cry is, Lord, we praise your name. Our battle cry is, Lord, we praise your name. Our battle cry is, Lord, we praise your name. He will shout and proclaim, we have victory in your name. Our battle cry is, Lord, we pray your name. Somebody come on and help me sing. Our battle cry. Our battle cry is, Lord, we pray your name. Anybody come to battle this morning? Our battle cry is, Lord, we pray your name. No, he gonna do it, but we need to praise his name. Our battle cry is, Lord, we praise your name. 
we will shout and proclaim we have victory in your name and our battle crying lord we praise your name our battle crying lord we praise your name our battle cry, our battle cry, Lord, we praise your name. One more time, our battle cry, our battle cry, Lord, we praise your name. Our battle cry, Lord, we praise your name. Shout and proclaim. We have victory in your name. We will shout in your name. We have victory in your name. We will shout in your name. We have victory. We have victory in your name. Our battle cry. Our battle cry. Lord, we pray your day. If you really mean it, come on, get up and praise him. Our battle cry, Lord, we praise your name. Our battle cry, Our battle cry, Lord, we praise your name. Our battle cry, Our battle cry, Lord, we praise your name. Come on and praise him. Anybody come to praise this morning? I know it ain't what you used to, but uh, it's time to break out anyway. Hey, Pastor Charles, I'm going to take you back for a minute. You ready? All right, all right. Shabbat. Hallelujah, Barack. Praise the Lord, Shabbat. Hallelujah, Barack. Praise the Lord, Shabbat. Hallelujah, Barack. Praise the Lord, Shabbat. Hallelujah, Barack. Praise the Lord. God, I mean to extend your hands. Told I mean to lift up your hands. But I mean to clap your hands. Hey! Our battle cry, our battle cry is, Lord, we praise your name. Our battle cry is, Lord, we praise your name. Our battle cry, battle cry is, Lord, we praise your name. One more time, our battle cry. Our battle cry is, Lord, we praise your name. We will shout and proclaim. We have victory in your name. We will shout and proclaim. We have victory in your name. One more time. We will shout and proclaim. We have victory in your name. Your name and our battle cry, Lord, we praise your name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our battle cry, we proclaim. We have victory 
in his name. How you got victory today? Come on, give God a shout in the house if you got victory in the name of the Lord. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. Can we put our scripture on the board? We're going to do our scripture today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Max, everyone, if you will, please stand all over the room as we declare our scripture today in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Mark 11, chapter, verse 22 to 26. When everyone repeat after me. And Jesus answering said unto them. And Jesus answered and said unto them. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you. For verily I say unto you. That whosoever. That whosoever. Shall say unto this mountain. Shall say unto this mountain. Be thou removed. Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea. And be thou cast into the sea. And shall not doubt in his heart. And shall not doubt in his heart. But shall believe that those things. But shall believe that those things. And shall believe that those things. And shall believe that those things. Which he saith. Which he saith. Shall come to pass. Shall come to pass. Therefore. Therefore. I say unto you. I say unto look you. Look at your neighbor and say, therefore. Therefore. I say unto you. I what thing, what thing, soever, soever, ye desire, ye desire, when ye pray, when ye pray, believe that you receive them, believe that you receive them, believe that you receive them, believe that you receive, them. believe that you receive them, believe that you receive, and you shall have them, you shall have them, believe that you receive them, believe that you receive them, ye shall have them, you shall have them, and when you stand praying, and when you stand praying, he didn't say sit down praying. He said, when you stand praying, do what? Forgive. Forgive. You know one thing about that? In order to receive the blessings in the favor of the verse before, for the promise that God has for you, if you got unforgiveness in your heart, guess what? It hinders your blessing. But he said, but if you forgive, where am I at? I lost myself. Okay, forgive. If you have all against any, that your father, that your father, also which is in heaven, also which is in heaven, forgive you your trespasses. Forgive you your trespasses. But, 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 if ye, if ye, look at your neighbor and say, if you, if you, do not forgive, do not forgive. Now look at your point at yourself. If I, I, do not forgive, do not forgive. Neither will my father, neither will my father, which is in heaven, which is in heaven, forgive, forgive me. My trespasses. My trespasses. And the word of the Lord is blessed. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Give God a praise on that word. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but that declaration we've been doing for eight years, going on nine years, been standing in my spirit ever since we started doing this. And I'm giving you the blessing in my life, teaching me how to walk in divine order with God. Amen. Because before that, it talks about Jesus coming to a fig tree right if you know the scripture he came to the fig tree when it was should have been bearing fruit but he said it was not bearing so what he said he spoke to the fig tree said from this day forth no man gonna eat from you ever again right so afterward when he spoke that curse over the tree they came back later on the disciples said hey Jesus that tree that you cursed it's withered away. Why? Cause the power of the tongue. We have the power to produce fruit in our lives or to condemn ourselves in a curse. Hear what I just said? You have the power to speak life over yourself, over your finances, over your children, over your marriage, over everything connected to you. You have the power in your what? Your tongue. If you don't speak the word of God over your own circumstance and believe God for yourself, all the praying and fasting that I do for you ain't going to benefit you nothing. 
Why? Because you're not in agreement. How can two walk together except they be agreed? And that's what God is saying this morning. As the people of God at Redeemed Faith Fellowship Church, we got to come together in agreement and believe God that God's going to expand the house. And trust God that every need for the church will be supplied. By faith in God's promises. We got an announcement today? You come on with the announcement at this time. Amen. Glory to God. Just want to throw that little nugget out there to encourage you today. Good morning, Redeem. Redeem. Good morning. <laughs> what is that? How's everybody doing? Morning. Definitely blessed. Definitely blessed. Amen. So our announcements are as follows. So um, Minister Deacon and Deacon and Quest is every first Sunday at 10 a.m. And per the pastor, baptism will be held Saturday, March 5th from 10 to 12 for those of you who want to be baptized. Um, see myself or um, Sister Sandra Anderson, um, and we'll get you signed up. Redeemed Faith Fellowship Men's Prayer Breakfast. <laughs> I didn't bring a flyer. It would definitely be um, the second Sunday in each month um, from 10 to noon. I'm sorry. That's right, the second Saturday of each month from 10 to noon. And I hear it was it was awesome last time, and I'm going to encourage you guys to keep inviting young men to come. Um, I think it's a good thing, and I think it's a good place for young men and all men to be. Um, amen. God is good. And so also on next Sunday, which is the last Sunday, the 27th, we will be having candy and chili sales. The flyers are posted um, in the vestibule and in the hall, and it's all a part of the building fundraiser. Um, the chili sales, they're going to have $5 bowls and $3 <coughs> cups. They, um, you can get it loaded if you want it or however you want. It's going to be a spicy chili, and then it's going to be a regular, a, uh, the regular chili is spicy, but then there's going to be a mild chili. So um, um, Minister Harris is making the chili and come out and support, and then his chili is really good. So um, um, support that, and the candy sale will be next week, too. Um, any other announcements? Yeah. I would like to uh, ask for uh, public prayer, publicly ask for prayer from the church. As I have a teenager now, my baby turned 13 on Thursday. Happy so please birthday. give a round of applause to Antoinette Hibbler, please. Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any guests? No, you're not a guest. Uh, are there, I, see, I see that there are, aren't any guests. These are your announcements. Please govern yourself accordingly. Amen. Amen. Birthday, Anyone have any testimonies today? I want to open the floor up for a testimony. If you got a testimony to share today, feel free to come forth at this time. Not everybody at once.
morning, everybody. <clears throat> I just want to say that God is good. He's good. <clears throat> Everything about the Lord is good. He's awesome. Um, the more you spend time with him, the more you give him your heart, the more you give him your mind, your soul. He will show you great and mighty things. <clears throat> so basically what I'm saying is just spend more time with the Lord. I'm telling you, if you just saturate yourself in him, you will fall deeper into the presence of the Most High. He will take you deeper. He will show you that he is the great I am. He will show you who he is. Hallelujah. He will show you that I will give you peace in the midst of every storm. Hallelujah. I am there with you always. Hallelujah. I am your peace. I am your joy. I'm everything that you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. And I know we're going through so many things with this pandemic, but God says, I am the greater I am that lives on the inside of you. Anything that you want, I already have it. I have everything that you need. Hallelujah. I will bless you with great and mighty things. The moment you believe that I will give you the great things, hallelujah, you have to give your whole heart and mind to him like never before. You have to give him your soul. You have to give him everything that you got on the inside of you. I know because I'm living this thing my own self and I'm, and I'm praying and seeking the Lord face every day just to get what I need from him. I'm telling you, if y'all spend more time with God, he will show you what you need. Sometimes you be looking for the wrong thing. He be showing you this is what you need. I will guide you here. I will show you. Hallelujah. Just seek the, hallelujah, seek him first. Seek ye first. Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first uh, uh, the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And I will give you everything that you want or need. So you might be going through hurt and pain. You might be going through frustration. Things might not be working out in your home. Um, something may not be working out the way you want it to work out. But trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. He said he's your peace. Hallelujah. He said he's your joy. Hallelujah. He's your everything. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ooh. He said, I come that you might have life. Hallelujah. More abundantly. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Know that he's there with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In the midst of every trial, in the midst of every storm. He said, I I'm with you always. Hallelujah. In the end of time, whenever, hallelujah, need peace. I'm there. Hallelujah. When you need joy, I'm there. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't have to be a little weary. In your, sometimes you be a little weary in your spirit, but God said, I will be there with you always. Hallelujah. Until the end of time, I will be there with you. Hallelujah. I don't care how rough it is. I don't care. Hallelujah. If you feel like your back is up against the wall, God, is, I, I, God said, I'm the peace. I'm your joy. I'm your understanding. I'm the love you need. Hallelujah. I will wrap you in your arms. I will give you peace. Hallelujah. I will do everything that you need. Just look to me. Hallelujah. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. But look to me because I'm everything. Hallelujah. So trust in me like never before. Hallelujah. Like it's your last day. God said, I will give you all things. All things. All things. Hallelujah. I will give it to you. Hallelujah. I will give it all to you. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Let me quit before I begin starting. Praising God. But God is so good. He is so good, y'all. His, his mercy is love. I mean, his, his mercy is great. His love is everlasting. Hallelujah. His peace is everlasting. Hallelujah. His joy is everlasting. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo! I am your peace. Hallelujah. I am your joy. Hallelujah. Woo! I am everything that you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give it all of me. Hallelujah. <laughs> Give me your heart. Give me your pain. I am everything that you need. I will supply all your needs according to your riches and to your glory. I am everything that you need. Woo! Thank you, God. It's so many people being hurting. It's so many people have been in pain. So many people been going through so much, even in the midst of this pandemic. But God said, Hallelujah. I am there with you. Hallelujah. Trust in me. Trust in me. I don't care what them doctors say. I don't care what they say you may have. Hallelujah. Great is he on the inside of you. 
I will give you peace. I will give you rest. I will give you understanding. I will do all the things that you need. Hallelujah. Come to me, my child. Heavy laden, heavy burden, heavy. Oh, hallelujah. Bound down, I will give it to you right now. Hallelujah. You don't have to look nowhere. Hallelujah. You don't have to look nowhere because I'm right there. Hallelujah. I will give it to you. Baba Sando. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. You're awesome, God. Hallelujah. You're Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. You're the beginning and the end. Hallelujah. The bright and morning star. Hallelujah, Jesus. We love on you today, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. So many people been depressed. So many people been hurting. So many people been going through changes. God said, I'm, I'm there. Sunday. Don't take your life. It's not. Your life is greater than that. I'm greater than that. Hallelujah. Don't do it. Sometimes people be lonely at home and don't have nobody to talk to. God said, Hallelujah. Just cry out and say, Father God, come to me. Hallelujah. Heavy laden, heavy burden, heavy burned down and going through changes. God said, give me, give it all of me. I will give you rest. I will give you the peace that you need. I will give you the love you need. I will give you the understanding that you need. I will give it all of you. Thank you, God. Glory. I come against any depression demon that's in this home and his church right now, God, right now. I rebuke it with the blood of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Any lonely spirit, I come against it. In the mighty name of Jesus, right now with the blood of Jesus. Thank you, God, for your peace, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for your understanding. I even thank you for your peace right now in this building, right now, God, like never before. Woo! How about I say? In the mighty name of Sunday. Glory to your name. But I just, that was my testimony. And I just want y'all to know that trust in God. Hallelujah. I don't care how rough it gets. <laughs> I don't care how, how, how hard it is. Know that God is with you. Woo! Know that God is carrying you through. God is taking you through whatever the situation you're going through. And he will give you rest on today. He will give you the peace on today. He will give you the joy on today. The love. No, 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 Saya. Everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sunday. Woo. Heavy laden hell. I will give you rest. I will give you peace. I will give you joy. I will give you love. Hallelujah. I am all that and some of about Sunday. I am all that and some of about Sunday. Glory to your name, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to your name, Jesus. Woo! Thank you, God. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, D. That was a congregation of songs on my heart. And, uh, you know, he still, from day one, he said, all we got to do is come to him. You know, because his line is never busy. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. If Jesus is on the main line, tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. Call him up. Somebody call him up. Tell him what you want. Oh, call him up. Call him up and tell him what you want. Call him up, call him up and tell him what you want. You just 
Call him up and tell him what you want. Why they never busy? Tell him what you want. Oh, the line is never busy. Tell him what you want. The line is never busy. Tell him. Call him up and tell him what you want. Yes, yes, yes. Call him up. Call him up and tell him what you want. Oh, call him up. Call him up and tell him what you want. Oh, Lord, call him up. Call him up. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. And tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Hold on. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. You just call him up and tell him what you want. Yep, yep. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. What up? Woo! While that song, while that song was on my heart, I was thinking about something that when we call him up, right? We ask God to cover, to cover our family, our friends. We ask God to cover our children. Cover, I ask God to cover my wife. I ask him to do, I ask him for everything. But he still said his line is never busy. All you got to do is call him up. See, when we call our friend, that line be busy. But I can tell you one thing, when you call on Jesus, when you call on Jesus, that line is never busy. Always remember that line is never busy, y'all. Because you know what? He loves us so much. You know what he did for us 2,000 years ago? You know what he did? They couldn't do nothing until it was his time. He said, my time is not yet, but when his time came, they keep saying, oh, I can do this, I can do that. Jesus said, if it wasn't given to you, you wouldn't be able to do nothing. That's what Jesus said. If it wasn't given to you, you couldn't do it. What God is saying, he gave us the power of prayer to have victory over the sin that's in, that we have in our lives sometimes. You know, the struggle that we go through, you know, the ups and downs that we go through, if we want victory, all we got to do is pray. Pray, pray, pray. Because that name, that name above all names, that name above all names, y'all, is Jesus. It's something about when you call on that name, the demons flee. I'm telling you, they flee. I mean, I, I really experienced it. I really experienced it. When you call on that name, Jesus, the demon cannot stay there. Because what he said, when, when the man's of God, the sons of God, but sent they shall to the Lord, and they said, and God said, Satan, where do you go from here to there? Trying to see who I can devour. But you know what, God? God got a shield over us. See, Satan can't do nothing blessing God, you know, okay. But y'all, we got to stay prayed up. We got to have our faith. See, if we can give him, we want, he want faith, he want somebody said, he wants somebody that will go to the end. See, this journey, see, I just got to say this, this journey is not for quitters. You know what it's for? It's for winners. The one that go all the way to the end. Is we willing to go to the end? You know, we willing to go to the end. We got to show our pastor when he ain't here, we willing to go to the end. You know, we got to stand. That's what God wants us to do is to stand. To stand strong. Is we willing to stand? I believe so. That's the reason why we're here.
And that y'all to keep praying in my spirit and I keep praying for y'all. Go down, Moses. Way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. Go down, go down, Moses. Way, way down in Egypt land. I want you to tell the Pharaoh. I just need you to tell Pharaoh. To let my people go. Whoa. When Moses was in Egypt land, so pressed so hard, so hard that he could not stand. Jesus, Whoa. I need you to steal away, steal away home. Come on, it's still away. Whoa. I just need you to steal away, steal away home. Jesus. Jesus. I want to say uh, last last week it seems like it was hard, but it wasn't hard. Because when, when, when you got God in your presence, you got God in your surroundings, you cannot help but to seek God for not one thing, not two things, but all that you need. And I just heard the minister say, that these children are dying. The elders are dying. These teenagers are dying. The young adults, they dying. But it seems like somewhere down the line, we missed when God told Moses to go down in Egypt land and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And I'm saying that because when I when I, I was in I was in the service here two nights. And as I was listening to the service on Friday, I was listening to the word and I heard the apostle said that there's it was two kind of slaves back in the day. Two kind of slaves. There was an in-house slave, and there was a field slave. And he went from there to say, in the future, right now, what is going on, there are in-house slaves. Well, I'm going to say, in-church slaves. Feel people of God. They are still in the field. But 
what I what I gained what I gained from that, and he took that from uh, the prodigal son. When there was one, was, he had two sons. He had one son that wanted his inheritance. The other son stayed at home. And then, when the father found the when the when the the one that left had came, he was on his way back home. Daddy spotted him from a ways down, and he ran to say, "Here, my son. This is my son." come on, come on, son. He said, come on, I got something for you. And he wanted, to, you know, he gave, he dressed them well because he was messed up. He was the one that was out in the field, that slave in the field because Satan had him going. See, we don't get it. We don't get it because we sit up in the church and we let Satan whoop on us. We sit in the church and we let Satan tell us what to do. We sit up in the church and look at people all crazy and you're thinking it's you, you're thinking it's them, but all the time, it ain't nobody but Satan. So the one, the, the, the son that was in the church with the daddy all the time, he, was, he started to complain. He said, well daddy, I did this and daddy, I did that. How many of y'all still saying that to God? God, I did that. Will you tell me to do it? I did it. It's sometimes we have to go the extra mile. And then sometimes we do just like God want us to do. Because sometimes God just tell you just to see how you're going to handle it. So he was, he was upset because the brother got all this. He said, I've been here all this time, and you ain't gave me no robe. You ain't, you ain't, pulled, you ain't killed not a, one, not a one piece of meat for me. But here he is. He done been all out there in the streets. But see, we don't know. We don't understand, though. When these people is out here like that, we got a lot of them in here in Milwaukee. We got a lot of them. I've been to, um, last year I went to Atlanta three times. They, in Atlanta, Arizona, every, I don't care where you pick up your bags and go, you're going to find them. But your job is, our job is, we got to go the extra mile. And we got to go down to Egypt land. If that's, if that's what it takes us. All of these different cities that we're going to ain't nothing but Egypt. Because you're going to find them in bondage. These people actually made them a bed outside under the tree. And no tent. They had cover and ground. And it was raining that day, the last day we went, because we did praise in the park. It was raining, and they just lay down, going to sleep. That's how they do it. I, I, I ain't never been out there like that. But I had to sleep in my car. I, I, I had to do that. But to be out there really like these people... I thank God for when God gave me the ministry, when he said, okay, <laughs> when he told me that, okay, this the year, you're going to get up and you're going to get out of here. And all, all the time, everywhere that we went, <laughs> and yeah, it's a lot of people so ran to go to Atlanta, they ran to go to New York, and I'm going to tell you, New York is just like Milwaukee, too. They got people there who is in the streets. They got people there who is homeless, who's hungry. They got orphans, and they got the poor. So, where we running from? Because everybody's so ran to get up out of Milwaukee. What are we running from? It's, it's no different. But I'm just, I, I just have to tell y'all how God be working on me. And I mean, when he, when he work, he do what he do. I, I, I was I was talking to Pastor. And Pastor asked me. He said, uh, "How did you learn? How, who learned you about 
about the class. I said, well, I'm going to tell you right now, I was like 50 years old, 50 some years old when God called me to the flags. And he said, oh, so you, you, just, you just did it? I said, uh-huh, because he didn't give me no instruction. So, so don't look at me funny, because when, when, when he called me up, I don't care how the music is, he's going to allow me to go for it. So I'm just saying to us today, you know, it's time that we do what we need to do. And I do, I'm going to say, say this. I thank God for all of all of y'all in here. Everybody. Everybody. Because we are a working ministry. We are working. Even when we can't see it. <laughs> Even when we can't feel it. He never stopped working. He's still working. Would y'all be blessed? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's giving time. Everybody get your hearts ready to give this morning. We want to also say to our pastor, wherever he's at this morning, happy anniversary to you and, and, and Sister Barbara Anderson. And, and may God bless you and give you the strength and the peace you need and the restoration to bring you back with more power to walk in the promise and the purpose God has for you at Redeemed Faith Church. Amen. So come on, give God a hand praise for our pastor's anniversary today. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I want everyone, if you will, please stand. <clears throat> if you have an offering in your hand, you don't have an offering in your hand, raise your hand anyway. It do doesn't matter. We're going to still trust God for blessings and favor and promises to be released upon our lives. Amen. So on everyone, if you will, lift up your offering. Uh, before you put it in, Dick, before you put, wait until you put it in, I want everyone to do me a favor. I want you to repeat after me. Lord, in the name of Jesus, not a debt do I owe, but the seed that I'm sowing, I pray, I believe that you're going to rain on it and bring forth a harvest, that I will live in the overflow, that my bank accounts will overflow, my money will overflow. Debts will be paid in full. Bills canceled. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may bring your offering. Father, this should bless you. Jesus. Hallelujah. Is that it? Amen. 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 Everybody please stand. Please stand. How many of you expecting God to do something supernatural in your life? How many are you expecting God to do something supernaturally in your life? I believe that God is going to do that because of the heart of obedience. He said in his word, when you give, it will come back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together, 
and running over shall men give unto your bosom. So if you're expecting a supernatural blessing in your life, I want you to repeat on me. Lord, Lord. Enlarge, enlarge my territory. My territory. You might want to get a little room on this thing and spread your wings in faith. Say, Lord, Lord enlarge, enlarge my territory. My Come on, let's get a little loud, a little radical with this thing. Lord, Lord enlarge, enlarge my territory. Enlarge. One more time, make the devil mad about it. Lord, Lord enlarge, enlarge my territory. Well, I'm going to ask a question. Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Won't God do it? Amen. I believe he would do it for you as he do it for me. You may be seated. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You got another song? I got one. I'm blessed. Praise the Lord. I'm blessed. No longer bound, no more chains holding me, my soul is resting, it's such a blessing, and praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm blessed, help me sing if you know it, I'm blessed. Praise the Lord, I'm blessed, no longer bound, no more chains holding me, it's such a blessing, my soul is resting, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm blessed. Oh, one more time. I'm blessed. Pray, praise the Lord. I'm blessed. No longer no bound. Longer bound. No, more chains holding me. no more chains holding me. It's such a blessing. Such a blessing. My soul is resting. My soul is resting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and praise the Lord today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. Oh, I'm blessed. Praise the Lord, I'm blessed. No longer bound, no more chains, no more chains. Because of the cross, because of the cross, my soul is resting. My soul is resting. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm blessed. Oh, blessing. One more time. I'm blessed. Come on and praise the Lord. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. I'm blessed. No longer bound. No longer bound. My shackles and my chains been broken. No more chains. Because of what Jesus me. done on Calvary. My soul is resting. My soul is resting. And you know what? It's just so much a blessing. Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm blessed. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, hallelujah, hallelujah, I'm blessed. Come on, tell them, I want to praise you, praise the Lord. Lord, you've been good to me. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave. Praise the Lord. But because you blessed me with breath of life, I should have lost my mind a long time ago. I want to tell you, thank you, Jesus. I know I'm blessed every day of my life. I want to praise you, Jesus. When the devil thought he had me, 
Praise the Lord. Father, I'm going to die of cancer Hallelujah. long time ago. I'm blessed. But because you bless me, because you love me, God, I want to praise you. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm blessed. How many of you know you're blessed today? Praise you want to tell God I'm blessed? Hallelujah. God, you paid a way out of nowhere. Where I didn't know where the next meal was going to come from. God, you showed up. I'm blessed. You put food on my table. You proved to me you're still able. From generation to generation. From everlasting to everlasting. God, you keep on making a way for me. God, I want to say I'm blessed. God, I'm blessed, and I know I'm blessed. Pray, pray the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Pray the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Lord. Pray the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. You know the Bible says. Praise the Lord. When Jesus met the woman at the well, he said, I want a drink. She Praise looked at him and said, you being a, a Jew, and I'm a Samaritan, you know we don't have no dealing with each other. But he looked at her and said, if you knew who I was, to ask you for a drink, you would give it to him. He would give you everlasting water. He said, from this water, you will never thirst again. That's why I know I'm blessed. I drank from that water over 30 years ago. I drank from that water, the everlasting water, and it changed my life. It changed my mind. I want to tell you today I'm blessed. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm blessed. Praise the Lord. See, when you know you're blessed, you ain't going to sit down on that thing. When you know that you know that God keeps on blessing my children, not one of them been to jail, he keeps on blessing my family, we ain't divided. When you know that God has blessed you, I will bless the Lord at all times. Thank the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Thank the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be in my mouth. 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 I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. Bless the Lord at all times. His praise. Forever in my mouth. Pray forever in my mouth. I will bless you, Jesus. Oh, oh. Oh. I told you, I came to celebrate the King of Glory. So I don't care about the praise him by myself. See, he's been too good to me to be quiet. So when I come into the house of God, already come prepared to praise him i bring my praise with me so you got to praise on the inside when you come into the house of god you gonna praise him because he protected you somebody could have robbed you somebody could have beaten you somebody could have killed you but because of the love of jesus the blood of jesus the blood covers and protects me. The blood shields and it keeps me. I want to bless the Lord at all times. 
His praise in my mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, 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 God, we worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you. We magnify your name, Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Woo. I don't know about you, Lord Jesus. but I feel his presence in this place. There's a wave of glory in the atmosphere. There's a wave of glory. I don't know if you can see it, but I see a wave of the glory in the atmosphere. God's presence is here right where you are. To meet you right where you are. He knows your condition. He knows your situation. He knows your troubles. He knows your pains. He knows your discouragements. But he wants you to know that day, there's a wave of the glory. Feel in the atmosphere. Oh, shine that out of our course, shine. In the real course, shine it in the boat, see the little back. Oh, oh, time, mama, mama, I say. Who can the devil shine that out of our course, son? Yet, time, I'm a shiny little set to the back. Oh, time, I'm a mama, my shit to the boat, go, son, that about. Oh, shine that about, I say, can it all shit? In the real coat, time, I'm a see. Yet, time, I'm a shun the deal, son. He shanta da ba ko sanda ba a se. The Lord says, He's reigning in your life. Says somebody in this place been worrying about things that's not in your power to change. Somebody been burdened down with anxiety and trouble. But the Lord is speaking. He's commanding you to arise above your circumstance. To redirect your focus from your problems to glory. From your problems to glory. Redirect your focus. Set your sight upon things that are above and not on the earth. God says, I'm shifting the atmosphere in your life. Your situation is changing. Right now, God says, there's a wave of the glory filling the atmosphere. God says, I'm shifting the atmosphere around you because I'm releasing my glory in your situation. He said, you've been worried about too many things. Stop worrying. Stop crying. Drown the tears from your eyes. Begin to worship me. God says, as you worship me, you'll begin to see my glory. Moving in your situation. I will show up as your deliverer. I will show up as your savior. I will show up as your redeemer. As you begin to worship me, says the spirit of God. God is doing something in this place today. I don't know about you, but I feel it. I feel change in the atmosphere. I feel change in the atmosphere. There's change in the atmosphere. God says you need a change today. You need to take off the grave clothes. He said you need to get into the glory right now. Take off your grave clothes. Take off your grave clothes. You've been living among the dead too long. Take off your grave clothes. Begin to close yourself in the glory. I'm releasing my presence in your lives. 
I'm releasing. I'm releasing my presence in your lives that you can take off your grave clothes and be changed in the place of glory with the glory clothes with the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Said, put on your new garment. Put on your robe of righteousness. Put on the express image of Christ today in your situation. When you put him in the midst of your storm, he will arise and command your storm to cease. Don't fret. Don't worry. Don't get up. Don't say, what's the use? I can't make it. But God says, keep on standing. Closed in the glory of the presence of the Lord. And God says, you will see with your own eyes your situation change. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, shantarabha, oh, shantarabha, sing. Oh, glory to God. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, oh, shantada bashe. Oh, tanana ba ko shantada basu. Oh, nana ba shiri o satana basi. Yes, God. Release your glory, Lord. Release your glory, Lord. Release your glory, Lord. Oh, shandarabo, shandarabasi. Oh, release your glory, Lord. Stir us up, God. Stir us up, God. Stir us up, God. Shake the foundation. Stir us up, God. Break the walls down of rebellion and resistance. Stir us up, God. Oh, Shana Mababashi. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, bless his name. Come on, give God a hand. Praise him here today. I don't know about you, but God is doing something in my life. I can feel the change, I can feel the power. I can see the wave of his glory in this place filling the atmosphere. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. And peace, goodwill towards all men. Glory to God. Yes, hallelujah. Oh, God. I think we got the best worship band on this side of heaven. Amen. Just awesome. Just God is really in the music. God loves music. You know God loves music. He said make a loud noise on the string instruments, the harps, the bows, the cymbals. He wants everything to have, have breath to praise him. We have instruments in ourselves. Satan was a worshiper. He was the chief musician in heaven until he lost his place. We allowed pride and iniquity to fill his heart. He was dispelled from heaven. And because of that, he lost his place. But thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. He restored us in the place of Satan where we are now the worshipers 
We have the right, we have the privilege to worship the Lord with our instruments. Glory to God. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. 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 For the things he has done with his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he has raised me. To God be the glory. For the things he has done for us. Hallelujah. Why don't you stand and turn to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is moving this morning in this place. The angels in heaven are rejoicing along with the worship in this place. It's so amazing, so awesome, it's phenomenal that we have the privilege and the right to worship God. Amen. You know, I heard a song years ago. It's only two times to praise the Lord when you feel like it and when you don't. Only two times to praise the Lord when you feel like it and when you don't. And a lot of people don't want to praise God. I'll tell you that now. They come in the house of God, won't praise them, won't open their mouth. But it's okay because you ain't hurting nobody but yourself. You don't open your mouth and praise the Lord, you cut your own blessing off. Amen. Because your blessing comes through your praise. Your blessings come through your worship. Because when you give God what he wants, guess what he does? He give you what you want in return. That's the God we serve. Amen, amen. Acts chapter 9, beginning at verse 1. It says, And Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughtered against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, what way is he talking about? Disciples of Jesus, the followers of Christ. Whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord says, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. You may be seated. You may be seated. If I was to have a subject concerning this passage of scripture, it would be the God encounter, a life-changing experience. The God encounter, a life-changing experience. Isn't it wonderful that when we think about our lives, how far we've come. From the time I didn't know Jesus and living a whoremonger life and adulterer life, a fornicator life, a liar, a thief, a murderer, a drunkard, smoking weed, partying all the time, all that stuff before Christ, right? 
But check this out. You got folks who confess they know Christ and still do the same thing. So they haven't really experienced the life's changing experience, which is the God encounter. Because when you have the God encounter, something in your mindset is reset. It's like a computer. When a computer messes up, and you can't get the virus and all the things off of it. You can take it to the shop. They can do what they can to remove malware and, and all types of corruption in your system. But if they can't fix it, they reset the whole system. There's a lot of people in the house of God need a reset. You need a reset in your mindset. Because your mindset has been deprogrammed against God for so long that when you try to live for God because of the root of wickedness, you need a reset. So many people are stuck in the house of God, attend church week after week, and their minds are still stuck in the formation of the old mindset. The formation, the formality, haven't changed. Don't desire change. Because why? I got time. How many times have you told yourself, oh, I got time to change? God knows my heart. God is going to give me time. He's going to let me come when, when I feel like I'm ready to come, and he's going to clean me up. He's going he gonna to take this stuff out of my life. He's going to take away the habits and addictions. Guess what? You're right. You got time. Time to die. That's your time. Time to die. Because you trying to live your life with the absence of God gives you time to die. Think about it. Because with Christ, he said, I give you time to live. But we come into the house of God acting like we got all the time in the world to do what we want to do when I feel like it. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for this moment and this opportunity to share your word. I pray, O oh God, that the word will convict all of our hearts to change, O oh God, to come to the place of being convicted, to no longer waddle in our sinful nature, but allow the transformation of the Holy Spirit to take place in our hearts to make us righteous. Forgive us for our sins, O oh God, knowing unknowingly, and wash it in the blood of the Lamb. And I thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity that I would decrease, that you will increase, that you make the, my tongue the pen of a ready writer, my heart the tablet engraved with your word, to speak by divine unction of the Holy Spirit, the revelation from the heart of God to change our lives for eternity. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Which brings me to my passage of scripture. There was a man named Saul who was at the stoning in Acts chapter 8 of Stephen, the disciple of the Lord. He was right there when Stephen preached the gospel. He was right there when the people decided we don't want to hear no more from you. Matter of fact, we're going to kill you. Saul was the same one who was there holding his coat while they stoned him to death. Isn't that something? You have a witness for your death. Somebody who's waiting on you to get into a bad position to watch you die. And Saul is the same individual who goes to the high priest and, and inquire letters to give him permission to persecute God's people. Isn't that something? Your haters are waiting on permission for your demise. They're waiting on you to fall. And they have the right, they have permission from Satan himself. 
because they're serving him and not serving the Lord. So they wait on you to get into a position where you abandon your position in the Lord. So Saul gets these letters. He didn't say one letter, so many letters. To go to Damascus, to the synagogues, the temples, the place of worship, the house of prayer. To go and drag out anybody who's a follower of Jesus. And bind them up and lock them up. Even persecute. Even torment. Because I don't like Jesus. I don't like this stuff they talking about. I don't like this encounter they claim they had with this Jesus. So I got to stop them. And he says, so he went that he might find anyone who was bound, I mean, who, the man or woman uh, that was in the temple to worship. He said, as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. He's going to the synagogue. He had his sight set on what he's going to do, his mission orders to carry out. If you've been in the military, we all have mission orders. And the orders is to obey the commander. Whatever the commander gives you instruction to do, you have to carry it out, whether you wanted to or you didn't. Otherwise, there was consequences. So Saul has his permission to torment God's people, but in the process of getting to the place to bring God's people into captivity, guess what happens? He has the God encounter. Because the Bible goes on to say that suddenly, this isn't something that was dragging and lingering to build up. It's something that happened right now. How many of you need a right now blessing in your life? So he had a right now encounter with God himself. Because the light shines from heaven, a bright light. And when he fell to the ground, he fell in a defensive mode. See, a lot of times when you fall, you try to catch yourself from falling. You know how when the ice is on the street and, and you slip on the sidewalk and you try to catch yourself, the more you try to prevent the fall, you make it worse. If, if you had just went on fail, it wouldn't have been as bad. But because I tried to resist and keep myself from falling, I hurt myself worse. So he fell in a defensive mode. However, a voice spoke from heaven. It knew his name. It knew his destiny. It knew his purpose. It knew, knew what he was about to do to God's people. It says, Saul, Saul, why persecute this family? Why are you trying to fight me? Why are you trying to stop my gospel from being preached? Why are you trying to hinder my people from fulfilling the call on their lives? So why persecutest thou me? But the amazing thing about this passage, he knew who he was that was speaking. Because he said, who art thou, Lord? He knew who God was. So this ain't the first encounter of knowing about God. So he heard about this God, but he didn't want to follow this God. How many people you came across, they can tell you the Bible from back and forth, that I know God, I heard about God, I seen what God can do in other people's lives, but when it comes to themselves, no, I don't believe that stuff. But yet I confess, I know God. So then it goes on, the Lord spoke. He said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am. <laughs> Glory to God in the highest. I am. You catch what I just said. If you know the Bible from beginning to the end, I am shows up on the scene. It says, I am Jesus. So I decided with this stuff like this. So I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Who are you trying to stop? Who are you trying to destroy? Who are you trying to hinder? I'm the one that you're trying to get in the way of. Say, so don't you know it's hard to kick against the pricks? If you look at the word pricks, it means gold. And a gold is a long stick about 10 feet long. 
and, and the thing has a sharp end on the, a, a sharp point on the end of it. So when oxes are plowing the field, this gold will stick them in their leg when they get stubborn and refuse to move. You hear what I just said? The gold is a sharp object that sticks you to provoke you to get you to move it and persuade you to do what I said to do. So it points in you and it hurts. So when the ox, my faith, bring it on home. When the people of God get stubborn, God says, I got a gold in the house of God going to stick you with the word of God to get you persuaded and provoke you to move. Glory to God. My, 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 my. And it says, he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said to him, arise. To arise and go on your journey. And he says, when you get to Damascus, I already have the plan in motion. I already have the scene set for your deliverance. This God encounter took a man who was prideful, who had the rights to do what he did, had permission, and broke him down to nothing. Because you read the scripture, it said the light struck him with blindness. Well, he could not even see. And you know what was so unique about this? The people who were with him they saw the light, but he's the only one who heard the voice. So when God began to speak, what I mean hearing the voice, he intently heard the voice because he knew God was speaking to him. And so when he heard the voice, he says, go to Damascus. And I thought about this. I'm blinded. I can't see, but you tell me to go somewhere. How many times you've been in a position where you felt like I was blinded from the will of God? I was blinded from my purpose. I was blinded from my destiny that God has for my life. And God says, go anyway. He told this man who's blind, and thank God his confidants were with him because they were the ones God used to be a witness of him being blinded and even getting to the place receiving his sight. So he says, go to Damascus. He says, and I have a disciple by the name of Ananias who's waiting on you to get there. But before he gets there, God has a conversation. You read the story with Ananias. Ananias said, Lord, I heard of this man, how dangerous he is. God, I don't want to deal with him. God said, don't worry about that. I made him a changed man. Because in the process of his journey, there's a transformation taking place. So when he gets to Damascus, where you are, he said, you're going to lay hands on him. He's going to be told what to do, and he's going to receive his sight. That is so awesome because God loves us so much to not leave us blinded. So when I have a vision to go start a church or go on evangelism or reach the people in the streets, start a food shelter, doesn't matter what it is God wants me to do, a homeless shelter, whatever. I have to have a vision. So even if I'm blinded in my own ambition, God makes his vision clear, clarified to me where I can see what he wants me to do. So as he gets to the place, in verse 13, he says, Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard, many, heard about by many of this man how much evil he has done to thy saints of Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call of thy name. But the Lord said to him, Go thy way, for he has chosen a chosen vessel unto me. Isn't that amazing? God still choose you in your mess. He still have a purpose in your mess. 
He has a life-changing experience for you in your mess. Because he told him, you go your way. He says, he's going to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Glory to God in the highest. I tell you, just because you get converted, there's still some consequences. But a lot of times, we don't want to deal with the consequences of our actions. If I lived a sinful life for many years, just because I've come to Christ doesn't mean I got any consequences that's coming to my life. I'm still going to have to deal with the things, the repercussions of all the actions that I saw and to hurt other people, even hurt myself. But thank God for Jesus because God's amazing grace, it reached down where I was in my mess. And God said, you know what? I'm going to give you the ability to rise above your circumstance, above your situation, and carry it through the circumstance and bring you out victoriously. Verse 17, Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him... And said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way thou camest. God set him on a pathway from a crooked pathway to a street called Straight that led him to Damascus. When he got to Damascus, he said, I heard about you, the same thing you encountered. He said, he has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. He has sent me to lay hands on you that you will receive your sight. But then he didn't stop there and be filled with the Holy Ghost. See, when the God encounter comes into your life, God doesn't just open your sight to see, but he fills you with the Holy Ghost. Because just because I can see doesn't mean I have power of the Holy Ghost. But when God opens my eyes and he fills me with the power of the Holy Ghost, now I can see my destiny that's set before me. I can see my mission order God has given me. I can know the charge God wants me to give. A, a charge to God I have. And a God to glorify. Because I know what God has set before me to do. And now I can walk in this calling and fulfill the purpose that God has for my life. Not being hindered by any demonic force. Not being stopped by any power of the enemy. But holding fast to the confession of my faith. That God is on the inside of me. The God encountered, removed the scales from my eyes. Took away the grave clothes. And clothed in the Lord Jesus Christ. That now I can receive the strength. It's that for three days he didn't eat or drink anything. Until he got his sight back. God touched his body. God changed his life. God opened his mind to begin to receive a word from a revelation. And when he got a revelation, glory to God. So after many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But the laying away was known of Saul. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. So every time you make up your mind that enough is enough, the same old crowd that I used to hang out in the clubs and the streets with, enough is enough. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired of holding on to the things of the world and ready to allow God to change your life, you're going to have some haters, you're going to have some folks standing on the sideline waiting to kill and destroy your life. But I want you to know that God covers you. God has a plan to keep your mind secure on him. God has a way that the devil can't stop you. No matter what he try to do to you, the power of the living God begins to fall on your heart. God makes known to you the strategies of your enemy. That they're lying in the trenches. 
They're lying in the caves. They're lying in the mountain top. They're surrounding you to destroy you. But God has a way that no man can overcome. God has a way to bring you out of darkness. God has a way to stop your enemies in his track. So God provide a way for Saul to escape his adversaries. Disciples got together after hearing the news of the people coming to destroy him. They let him down on a sheet from a window. He can escape from them trying to kill him. The spirit of the living God will shield and protect you. The power of God will raise you up with power and authority to stand on the word of God. Doesn't matter what the enemy does to you. You hold on to God's unchanging hand. Allow the God encounter to change your mindset. He'll give you a new mind. He'll give you a new heart. He'll give you a new spirit of the living God. God will come on the inside. Wash away your sin and lawlessness. God will change your conversation. Give you a garment of praise and space of mourning. God will open up your heart to worship and magnify his name. Doesn't matter what you're going through. Just hold on. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. When God comes in your life, your haters become your elevators. Your haters become your delegators. Your haters become your promoters. They're going to push you into your destiny. They're going to push you into your assignment. They're going to push you into your purpose to walk in the call of God on your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You know, people thought I wasn't going to make it. They thought I was going to die a long time ago in my sin. They thought I was going to die of cancer. Thought the devil was going to take my life and ruin me. Because he took my voice, I couldn't talk. I couldn't even watch him and sing praise to God. But you know what? In the midst of it all, I said, Lord, I'm going to worship in my moaning. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to magnify your name. Ooh, Lord. I'm going to glorify you. Even when I can't say a word, I'm going to wave my hands before the Lord. I'm going to worship you, Jesus. I'm going to dance and praise your name. You've been too good to me to, to be silent in the house of God. Everywhere I go, I don't mind telling the world that God changed my life. I had a God encounter. I had a revelation in my mind. God took me out of muck in the miry clay. Waiting on a rock to stay. And now, I have a God to worship. I have a king who lives inside of me. I have a savior who died for me on an old rugged cross. Then now I can lift my hands everywhere I go. I can worship his holiness because he saved my life. He changed me. He delivered me. He brought me out of darkness when I was blinded by my sinful ways. He removed the scales from my eyes when I was sick in my bed of affliction. He touched my body. He raised me up again and leave me a living testimony that I can glorify God in my life. That everywhere I go, I can meet people on the street corners. Tell them God loves you. He died on the cross for you. He didn't leave you down in the muck and the miry clay. He didn't turn his back on you. He died for you. He died for me. He rose from the grave to bring me new life. That I can worship his name. I can tell you, God, I want to thank you for giving your life. I want to thank you for bowing down the garden of Gethsemane. I want to thank you for the sweat that dropped like tears of blood. I want to thank you, God, 
for getting out of that grave. I want to thank you, God, for getting up for me on resurrection day that I can receive a new life. The resurrection power. The resurrection power. The resurrection power. It raised me up from the dead. You took off my grave clothes. You clothed me in a robe of righteousness. You started me on my way. You gave me a new journey. Put word in my heart. A sword in my mouth. To speak your word, oh God. To a dying generation. And God, I want to tell you, thank you. I thank you for showing up in the midnight hour. I thank you when my body was aching and pain. I thank you that you are my comforter in a sad hour. I thank you for causing me to get up off my bed of affliction. I can worship you, God. I can praise your name. I can glorify you. I can worship you, God. You didn't have to do what you did. But God, I thank you. Yeah! 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 God, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. You didn't have to suffer for me. You didn't have to give your life for me. But God, I want to thank you. That every day I open my eyes. I can open up my mouth and just tell you thank you. Just tell you thank you. Tell you thank you. But tell you thank you. When I could have died of a heart attack. I could have died of a bullet shooting me, God. I want to tell you thank you. God, you've been too good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I don't know about you today. I feel good about Jesus. Because he didn't have to bring me out of my mess. Could have let me die a long time ago. Being a homosexual. Could have let me die being a fornicator. Could have let me die being a adulterer. Could have let me die in my wickedness. But because of the grace of God, I stand here today to tell you I'm saved. And I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost power. Fire on the inside. I can't hold my peace. The fire keeps on burning. I got to testify how good God is to me. I got to testify how he saved my life. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I don't know about you, but I feel good. Glory to God. Because he didn't have to do what he did. He could let you continue to be a drug addict. Could let you be a pimp and a prostitute. Whatever your sin is, you were. He could have left you right there. But because of the cross, hallelujah. Thank God for Jesus. Thank him for the cross. Where the blood came streaming down. They pierced him in his side. For you and for me. That I can be set free. And have the right. To the tree of life. Won't you stand all over the room. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, shana na mo sha. Oh, na na ma shete. Hallelujah. Oh, shana na ma shete bo ka. Oh, ta ma 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 ko sha na ma hase. Oh, shana na ma so. Oh, na na ma 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 si te to ma. Gro ka ma 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 hase. Oh, Yeshua Hamashiach. Oh, shana ma ma se. You are the Messiah. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You're the Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the ending. From everlasting to everlasting. Thou art God. I'm trying to quit, y'all. But something on the inside won't let me hold my peace right now. I gotta magnify him. He keeps on doing great things for me. 
The devil can't stop my praise. The devil can't stop my worship. I praise him anyhow because God has brought me from too many things. He brought me a mighty long way. A mighty long way. To be 57 years old. A mighty long way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Bring down the music. Bring down the music. Bring down the music. Glory to God. You might be here today. And you know that in your life, you've been held back by the enemy. Even blinded from knowing who you are. The thing about the God encounter, it calls Saul to receive conversion, a life changing experience. And today, if you are here and you don't know the Lord as your Savior, and you want to walk with the Lord and you turned and walked away, He's here for you today. And God wants you to know today that salvation is free. Salvation is free. You don't have to pay for it. You don't have to buy it. All you have to do is receive it. And I guarantee you will have the God encounter. That's a life-changing experience. From this day forward, you will know an assurance. If I walk out of this place today, I will spend eternity with Jesus. I don't want to be one of those that walk out of this place uncertain. So if something happens to me, I die and go to hell. Because there's only two places you're going to go. Either heaven or go to hell. But you have that choice to make up your mind. Allow God to take your mind through a transformation. Take away the mind of the world of carnality and give you the mind of the Spirit. I want everyone over the room <coughs> to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I've sinned both night and day. And I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for my sins, knowingly and unknowingly. Come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Purify my thoughts. Change my life that I can be a vessel to serve you all the days of my life. Now fill me with the Holy Ghost power to be a witness for you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You prayed that prayer and you meant that. You held accountable for that prayer. God is going to hold you accountable for that prayer. But as we get ready to go, I encourage you, go home, read Acts chapter 9, and see what God speaks to you personally as you desire the God encounter, a life-changing experience. I guarantee God would do that for you. So Lord, I thank you for your presence in this place, oh God. As we leave this place, but never from thy presence, I speak favor and blessings over every person that you shield and protect them from danger seen unseen. And let them make it to their destination safely. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You're dismissed.